Hi, I'm Jeff Morrow from Sierra Analytics, and I'm here to teach you the basics of HD Examiner. HD Examiner is a comprehensive software package for doing HD exchange mass spectrometry data analysis. Using HD Examiner, you can turn your HDXMS data into a clear picture of the overall deuteration behavior of your protein. To use HD Examiner, you'll need three things. First, you'll need a FASTA file of your protein sequence. Next, you'll need a list of expected peptides derived through something like a Sequest or Mascot search. And finally, you'll need your LCMS data files, both your undeuterated control experiment and any number of deuterated time point experiments. So to begin using HD Examiner, we go to File, New, and we bring in a FASTA file of our protein. So I have one here, I open it up, and there's our protein sequence in the HD Examiner window. So one of the great things you can do with an HD exchange experiment is to compare two or more states of your protein, such as stressed versus unstressed, mutant versus wild type, or in this case, ligand bound versus unbound. HD Examiner supports this with the use of protein states that you set up here in the protein view. So by default, a project contains a single protein state called protein state one. Since this is a ligand binding experiment, I want to actually make two protein states. So I'm going to first edit this one by selecting edit protein state. And this one is going to be called unbound. And then I'm going to right click again, select add protein state and call this one bound. So once you've imported your protein and set up your protein states, the next step is to import your peptides. So to do this, go to the peptides view, and here under peptide sources, right click and click add a peptide source. HD Examiner can read peptides uh, from a variety of different formats, including Sequest HTML, Mascot XML, PEP XML, and even just regular tabular data, which is what I'll be importing here, an XLS file. When you import tabular data, it pops up this window to show you which columns are, are in your table. HD Examiner needs, at a minimum, a retention time column, a charge column, and a sequence column, and it needs that data for every peptide. In this case, the table I'm importing has only those three columns, so it knows that this is retention time, charge, and sequence because of the labels that are in the file. Once you have a peptide source, it's time to turn it into a peptide pool. Now, there are many features that HD Examiner can do to help you filter your peptide source before turning it into a peptide pool, but I'm not covering those in this video. So, to turn a peptide source into a peptide pool, we click this Add Marked Peptides to Pool button, and we add them to Pool 1. So now we have a list of peptides in our pool and the retention times at which we expect to find each of these peptides. So, the next step is to go and find them. So to do that, we go over here to the analysis view and we start loading up mass spec data files. You can see we have both of our protein states here, unbound and bound. So I'm gonna right click on unbound and say add experiment. I'm gonna click on this button here. I'm gonna select my unbound, undeuterated mass spec data file. HD examiner requires profile mode MS data. So I'm gonna select that. I'm going to tell HD Examiner that this is a bottom-up LCMS experiment and it is undeuterated. I'm going to hit OK, and as soon as I do, you can see down here in the bottom that the calculations are already starting. So, what you're seeing here when I select one of these results, uh, for this peptide, the blue trace is the theoretical isotope cluster for that peptide at that charge state. The red trace is the actual mass spec data within that M over Z window and within this retention time window. This area over here is an extracted ion chromatogram of the theoretical isotope cluster. So the fact that we see a nice sharp peak in the extracted ion chromatogram means that we probably got a very good match here. You'll see down here in the table that the results are color coded. 
Green means high confidence. It means there's a very good match between the theoretical isotope cluster and the actual isotope cluster. Yellow means medium confidence. So for example, in this case, you can see there's some signal to noise issues here, but the cluster is probably still correct. And a red result is one that HD examiner couldn't find at all. You can see that this peptide uh, at charge state three probably just isn't there in that data. So we're skipping ahead now. This is the same ligand binding experiment, except now we've loaded all of our time points, uh, including replicates in some cases, and we've analyzed all of the data. Once everything is analyzed, the next step is to go back to the peptides view and look at the uptake curves for each of your peptides. So in this case, the uptake plot shows two curves. The black curve is the unbound protein state, and the blue curve is the bound protein state. Each of these shapes represents a single result as calculated back in the analysis view. These shapes are color-coded by confidence. Green means high confidence, yellow means medium confidence. Low confidence results are not shown in any downstream calculations. These shapes are also shape-coded by charge state. So circle means charge state one, diamond means two, triangle means three, square means four, etc. You can hide these data points and you'll see that there are also error bars on the curves based on the number of data points that exist. And in this case, since we have very small, uh, tight error bars that don't overlap, we can be fairly confident that there is a statistically significant difference between the two protein states for this peptide. Occasionally, you'll be going through your peptides and you'll see an uptake plot that looks like this. In this case, we can see that charge state three for the unbound state differs from the other charge states. We can investigate this through HD Examiner by opening up the peptide, opening up in this case, the unbound state and charge state three and what you see is every time point for that peptide at that charge state. Now what's going on here is that the expected retention time of this peptide is around eight and a half minutes. You can see that in the undeuterated control, HD examiner is finding that peptide at its expected retention time. HD examiner will sometimes adjust expected retention time windows to compensate for chromatographic drift, but in this case it's doing that more than we would like. It's looking for our target peptide all the way back at 7.2 minutes, and that's not what we want. So what we can do is right drag over the retention time range we want, and this tells HD examiner to use that range instead of the range it previously calculated. And you can see that it found a medium confidence result, and if we look back at the unbound trace, we can see that for that time point, all of the results now agree. So I'm skipping ahead one more time. This is the same project, except now we've curated our data. We've gone through and corrected errors like I showed you before by either doing manual overrides or setting things to low confidence, or in some cases just completely deleting a peptide from the list. So now we have these peptides, all of which have fairly well-behaved uptake plots. Once you've done that, it's time to go back to the protein view and look at the heat map. So here's what you're looking at in the heat map. Above the sequence, you have lines representing your measured peptides. The yellow lines are for medium confidence peptides and the green lines are for high confidence peptides. The low confidence peptides are ignored here. Below the sequence, these color bars are the heat map for your protein at each of your experimental time points. Up here in the corner is a color key. Blue means little to no deuteration and red means highly deuterated. So in this case, we can select the unbound state and see that heat map. We can select the bound state and see that heat map. And if we select both together, we can see the difference. And sure enough, this area around residue 40 is exactly the binding site of the ligand in question to this protein. So that concludes this demo of HD Examiner. I hope you learned something from it. 
If you have any further questions, or if you'd like to try a free 30-day trial of the software, please contact us at support at hdexaminer.com. Once again, this is Jeff Morrow with Sierra Analytics saying thanks for watching.